Good morning. Hello. Welcome to my craft room. It is so great to have each one of you here today. My name is Carrie Giletto and I am one of Heartfelt Creations online instructors. And today we are going to be taking a look at the brand new uh, filigree frames and border sets. So let's go ahead and switch the camera and take a look at this new set. All right. Here we go. Look at these. They are so beautiful. They just launched yesterday and I know that all of you are going to love these sets. So when I first got the sets, I was very excited to start using them. And then once I die cut them and saw how beautifully these uh, frames are, I just fell in love with them and I know that you will as well. So let's start with the oval filigree frame. I have a quick sample here that I had made. Look how beautifully that cuts out. And one of the things I really love about this is your circle here. If you want to use that as your base, it's a nice large area where you can put a really nice statement flower in the center. I wanted to compare it to like some of the other ovals. If you notice on this one, your, your circle is a little bit smaller that you have to decorate in, which is perfect for some flowers, but sometimes you need a bigger area. So I love that this one gives you this nice big oval that you can decorate in. And as I've looked at some of the uh, design team members' designs, I have really loved this piece here. Let's show this piece right here. It is so lovely when it cuts out. And I didn't use it in my sample today, but uh, I'm really excited about using that. That's a really beautiful piece. So this is a must have. I love this set. All right. And look at the rectangle filigree frame. This is another uh, favorite. Oh, you know what? I did use that. There it is. <laughs> I had forgotten. I put it on this one. But here again, I put the silver on top, and isn't that just lovely? And uh, I, I'm so excited to use this in so many ways. And then we have our two uh, border and accent sets. There are so many ways that you can combine these. Here's um, one way to make an edge on your card, which is very uh, fun. And you can mix and match these in different ways to make different edges, which is beautiful. And then we have all these little decorative pieces. And that's what we're going to be using on our project today. We're going to be using a lot of these little decorative pieces. I wanted to show you one more that I had made. And that was with this piece right in here. I just thought that was such a lovely piece with all of its uh, swirls and curly cues. And I also took this beautiful edge piece and uh, did that on a smaller card to make an edge. You know, you don't have to use the whole thing. You can cut those down to uh, fit different sizes. And uh, that's just an, another idea. All right, so now that we've seen some of the samples, let's go ahead and look at our project that we're gonna make today. So here is a, a set of gift, a gift set of cards. I've told you before that I really like to have things like this on hand uh, to give as gifts to people when, um, just as a thank you, when people learn that you're a card maker, a lot of times uh, they enjoy getting handmade cards from you. So this is just a, an idea that I'm sharing today. And it's a great way to kind of utilize some of these uh, little pieces in here to very quickly jazz up some fast and easy um, gift sets. So when we untie this, there we go. It starts off right there with a for my friend on your special day. You are so thoughtful. And then we have a shaker in here of hope you your day you are hope your day is as special as you are and then some birthday love. So these are just um, some more um, ordinary cards that everybody can utilize. So um, let's get started. Now today I chose to use uh, the poppy page, the poppy paper, but this idea, all of our uh, paper pads come with a sheet that looks like this. Here's ones from the Dragonfly, and they're pretty much the same configuration of um, 
dies and sizes. So um, I use the poppy, but if you like this idea and want to use it, you can certainly uh, get this page from any of our paper pads. So the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and uh, cut apart all of these uh, pieces you need. Um, and I have done that already. I just put them here on this base so that we could take a look at them. So you're going to cut off the main piece and then you'll cut all these apart. Now we're going to bring in just a few more sets here. You're going to use the basic uh, circle basic large. Let's set that right there. And you'll need the, the largest one from this set. That cuts out this circle just perfectly. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then from the eyelet circle and basic small set, the very largest eyelet circle fits this circle perfectly. So this fits inside perfectly. So to make this uh, design, you actually need um, both of these sets. So you'll need to cut one of those out in black. There, there's my other one. I couldn't see where I laid it. So to get this design, you actually need both of these sets. If you use the next one down from this, your, your width would be much uh, wider. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cut that those two out. Um, the eyelet you'll cut in black, and once that is cut out, we'll go ahead and that mounts perfectly right inside of there. So we'll need to do that. Okay, the next one you're going to do is cut, mat, and create um, 1A. And we're going to get this one right here. And that is sized perfectly to cut, I believe it's this one right here. We're going to cut this out right down here. The you are so thoughtful, we're going to cut that out right there. And if you wanted to mat this, you would need this companion set, and it would be this one right here, and that would give us a perfect black outline around that piece. But we're actually not going to use that one right now. And the next one that we're going to use comes from this set. And it's going to be this one right here. And that is going to perfectly cut out this one right here. So these cut mat create sets are very useful to have on hand. If you don't have these, I hardly recommend adding them to your stash because they are perfect for it gives you all the sizes to cut and mat all these little shapes that are in your paper pad. All right, so once we have those all cut out, the next thing we're going to do is I have brought in two of the uh, sentiment sets. I'm using the birthday and the just for you, but you can certainly uh, go through the sentiment sets and the different sentiments and choose ones that you like for uh, the different cards. Now this, this one right here, I chose to use on the other side. So I'm using it this way because I'm gonna pair it with this uh, pretty piece here. So I used on your special day, but all of the sentiments come from these two sets right here. All right, and I just stamped all of those in black. And I'll go ahead and take my pieces off of this board. I just had them temporarily uh, adhered here so that I could show you it all as one piece. All right. So now that we have all of our, our stamped and shapes, we can go ahead and set these aside. And we're going to use our filigree sets. Okay, so we're going to need to use a black sheet of paper. And we're going to use some double-sided uh, uh, adhesive. So for today, I'm going to be using this one right here. Um, it's made by Elizabeth Crafts, but this comes, um, you can buy it in just about any width. Here's another big roll. It's just a double-sided adhesive, and several companies carry that. Um, you've heard me mention Score Tape before. That's just a brand name of double-sided adhesive. And then you can also buy it in a sheet form. Um, all of it is just double-sided adhesive, so it all works the same way. But I find for this particular function, using a roll is very convenient. You just pull it out, lay it down, press it across, and then use your scissors to uh, cut that off. Okay, 
So once you have this covered with your double-sided adhesive, and I would do that to the whole piece of paper, we would turn it over and we'll start using our dies. So like I said, these are the two sets we're going to be primarily using today on our black paper with the double-sided adhesive on the other side. And the first ones we're going to use, I'm going to do it on this side, is this one right here. And you need to die cut this one twice out of your uh, double-sided adhesive. Now, when you cut through this, often it doesn't cut through the backing paper. It just cuts through the black, so it stays on the page. So don't be alarmed if that doesn't cut all the way through the, the, the backing paper. Backing papers on these are often um, kind of uh, plasticky. You know, they have a film on them that make them a little thicker, which actually makes it nice. And when we get to making our cards, I'll show you how that works. Hold on one quick second here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we'll use two of these. And the next one we're going to need is uh, this one right here. And we're going to cut this out four times. So I just like to lay it like this on my page. And you can cut that out four times. And that one is in this set right here, the accent border. Then we're going to use these two right here, and you're going to cut these out once each on, on the same page here. Then we're going to use this pretty piece right here. You're going to cut it out just one time. And then this long piece right here, you're going to cut it out twice, but you want to make sure that you, you leave some space behind it each time. And I'll show you how I did mine when we uh, get there. And then from this set, these two little leaves up there, we're going to cut those out once each. And whoops. Oh, yes, this one right here. Let me show you on this. Um, these little curly cues right here, you're going to cut those out four uh, twice each. So you'll have four, but you notice they go the, the different way. So you're going to cut them each out twice. So you'll have four total on those. All right, so once we do that, let me go ahead and pull my sheet out. I went ahead and did this in advance so that you can see how mine are cut here. So you see how those cut out? I'm going to hold them up to camera. Maybe you'll be able to. Yeah, there you go. Get the light right on it see how those are cut out now this one i went ahead and punched out so you could see but you can see on the back the majority of them you can see the design but it doesn't cut completely through and that actually makes it a little easier to pull them off to to use them so now that we have this all ready we can set that aside for just a moment and we have a couple other things that we need to do real quick before we get to creating our cards so our largest card is going to be six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So you'll need to make a card base that measures six and a quarter by six and a quarter and cover it with a uh, black uh, piece that measures the same. Then you're going to need one six by six card and you're going to leave it uh, white. We're not going to cover that one. We're going to use three A2 size cards and two of them you're going to uh, cover with black and that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So you need two with the black and then one we're going to leave white. All right. And the last thing you're going to need is one piece of acetate. And here I'll put that on the black. Maybe you'll be able to see it better. One piece of acetate and mine measures um, four and a quarter by five and a half. It is the same size as an A2 card. So we're going to need that for our shaker card later. Alright, so the first one we're going to make is this one right here. And like I said, this is an idea that uh, gives you a, a very fast news. You can make these gift sets up so quickly and you can just make them out of every paper pad you get and have them sitting ready to give as gifts when, whenever you need. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and adhere this sheet to your six and a quarter uh, card. Now one thing I like to do is I do go around my edges with ink. So on this one, I go around the edges with the leaf green. 
we're only using three inks today and that would look at that my my glue is just weeping all over the place that might uh, make for a mess today yes <laughs> all right so we'll go ahead and put this down and before i add on this piece i'm going to go ahead and use some of my decorative pieces so the first one that i'm going to start out with is this one right here and I'm going to go ahead and cut off these little ends. Just going to trim those off. And now, I'm going to peel this up. Now, sometimes your, your little inner pieces stick in there, so you do have to kind of press those back down. Whoops, stuck on my finger here. All right, so I'm going to take out these little inner pieces. It's good to use a pokey tool just like uh, when you make a die. Hopefully on our next one, we can get those to stay down a little better. There we go. They're coming out just fine. It's just uh, sticking to my fingers. There we go. Yeah. One here doesn't want to come out. There we go. Okay, so once you get all the little sticky pieces out, then we're just going to, there's all adhesive on there. We're just going to position that right on our paper. Now, one thing about most adhesives, uh, the sticky back adhesives, once you put them down, they're not repositionable unless they say they're repositionable. So you do want to make sure you get that where you want it when you first put it down. There you go. So there is our first piece. Let me go ahead and throw these little bits away. And we're going to do that one more time. And this one, I'm going to endeavor to try to pull that up without all of those little pieces coming out. There we go. Yeah. You can kind of see, if I pull that up at an angle, you can get those little pieces to stay down in there so that you don't have to do what I just had to do with the other one. Just had a couple and we're going to go ahead and chop off those ends again just like we did before and add that in the same way and i did have just a couple pull up so we'll poke those out real quick and we're going to add this one right down here in the exact same place. See that? There we go. I still have this one little thing it backed up on me. Okay. I'm glad I'm doing this really curly Q one first because it seems to be giving me the 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 most uh, trouble here. There we go. All right, rather than fight with this, I'm going to go ahead and lay that down. There we go. Okay, you can see how one of my little pieces uh, stayed in there. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that one out. There we go. Okay, that, uh, now that we have these pieces in, and you see I had one, it flipped back and stuck to the underside, and I don't want to fight with it right now. So we'll go ahead and pull up our little uh, side pieces and get those on. And for these, I just uh, put them just like this on the side. And there 
There you go. All right, so this one is almost done. We're gonna, I added some foam tape to the back of our circle here that we made. And very quickly, we have our first card. <laughs> okay. Yeah, someone said you could, um, it looks like Pamela asked, you could just cut your card base out of black. You could definitely do that, but for your inside, you would just make a white panel and put, um, and put your, uh, so that you could write a greeting on the inside. That's really the only uh, reason to uh, cut it out of white is just so your inside is white, but you could definitely use black paper and then just cut yourself a panel real quickly to um, add that. So here, I'm just gonna pull that out. That's bothering me. There we go, okay. And this one up here, I'll work on later. But there you go, we have our first card done. <laughs> I promise this was quick and easy when I didn't do it on camera. Okay. <laughs> Someone gave me a heart. Yes, I'm glad that one's done. Okay, so we'll go ahead. There's our first one. And we're going to come back and do our glitter at the end. The next one we're going to do is this pretty For My Friend. And so we'll go ahead and uh, get our piece for this. Now for this one, it goes on one of our black card bases. And uh, here they are. I'm hiding them. And all we need to do is trim this one down. So I'm going to take my paper cutter and I cut an 18th of an inch off of each side. I thought this one, uh, just so, I just went around the whole thing and cut 18th of an inch off of each side. There we go, so we have it all done. Now for this one, I came around the edges with the T-rows. And I added foam, foam to the back of the whole thing. There we go. Someone had asked before about this really wide foam tape. <clears throat> you can find this online. It's a very handy thing to have when you're doing lots of foam. <clears throat> all right, so we're just going to add this on here. And you can see how all of these uh, beautiful uh, filigrees, how you can just use them in so many different ways. Uh, let's make sure we got it open the right way. I'm just going to add this in here. And of course, when you're designing these card bases to make a set, you can do all kinds of different things with them. But for this one, we're going to get out our fancy little filigree piece here. And I'll show you how I did this one. It's the little curlicues that are wanting to stick. All right, there we go. So once we get our little uh, curlicue pulled up, decorative, I'm going to attach it right here in the center, and then I'll be able to, to fix these bits. There we go. All right, there we go. Now, when you get these uh, put down, one of the things I wanted to show you is how you can combine the different shapes to make additional shapes. So you can see here I, how I added the little leaves on the, the end. So you definitely can trim them down and manipulate these to get uh, lots of different looks from them. So we're just going to add our little uh, curly Q leaf right on the end. Thank you, Clarabelle. Welcome. Hello. There's so many of you. We've got people from all over. We've got from Georgia. Yes, I agree. Uh, using a white embossing powder on black is a, definitely a fun way to go. You'll definitely want to use an anti-static tool because that can 
get messy on you, but that, that's a, a great way to add your sentiment on black. Um, I believe Pamela said she likes to use the, the white embossing powder on black. So there we go, card number two. And we just really jazzed up our, uh, our simple card just by using these beautiful filigrees. Okay, set that one aside. We're ready to go on to the next one. And this one is the You're So Thoughtful. And let's see here. My pieces are getting uh, mixed up over here. There we go. So we have this one. And the way I did this, I went ahead and put foam behind this piece right here. And this is the one that we're going to mount on another uh, one that has the black frame. And I just went ahead and put that right down. Now for this one, I did not uh, die cut this one yet because I wanted to show you how these dies so perfectly uh, fit right on here. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut that very quickly. You'll, ha you'll hear my machine over here for just a second. But it is fast. How's everyone doing today? Beverly's here from Tennessee, and we've got Brenda from California. Welcome. All right, so there we go. Okay, so we've got our You're So Thoughtful cut out. So is everybody starting to get some fall weather where you are? We finally were in the 80s yesterday, which was so wonderful. There we go. All right, see how that just perfectly cuts that out for you. I love that. Makes it so easy to use to make quick cards to for uh, just to use these pages that have these cutouts. And again, on this one, I went around the edges with the T-rows. So for the frame, we're just going to uh, glue that down, leaving a nice wide border. And then the You're So Thoughtful, we're going to go ahead and pop that up on some foam. Did I make it too long? Yep, just a little bit too long. No worries. There we go. All right. There we go. And we're just going to have that raised up right there in the center. All right. So because that is lifted up, I'm going to show you a trick that you can do with uh, some of these. So what we're going to use is, uh, let's see, it might be easier to show you on the thing, but it's the little uh, curly cues that look like this. The curly cues are really wanting to stick as I pull them up off of my sheet. <laughs> so, okay. All right, so once you get your curly cue pulled up, I'll show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to put it down on the corner here. It's just really, really sticking. But what I did was this one end I went ahead and snipped it off so that we could put it up on the raised part. Does that make sense to everybody? And then for the other part, we tucked it underneath and put them right on the corner. Now, I'm not going to do all four of these just because it's sticking to my fingers <laughs> so badly that it would take me a long time. But then I use this piece to make in the corner. And again, I had one piece uh, stick down in there. There we go. I think what happened is maybe I should have used a shim when I ran these through because they're sticking so bad. But you can see how I 
cut this corner off just so it could be on the raised part it's just to give that a little uh, more interest on there so this is the one i did that to all four corners um, raising up that that one corner so that very quickly gave me this card and i did not have trouble at all pulling these up when i first did these original ones i think i must have um not used a shim as well and maybe it just didn't uh, separate as well so we won't let that stop us okay so there's our uh, you are so thoughtful card and the next one we're going to do is our shaker card so we have this piece and we have cut this out and on this one we're going to use our six by six card and we're going to go around um you need to go around the box with a little bit of double-sided adhesive and we're going to go ahead and add our acetate all right so has everybody been enjoying watching um all seeing all of the design team members beautiful cards made with the filigree frames aren't they gorgeous i love how all the uh, design team members what they've done with these dies they just have inspired me so much you're going to see me using them a lot in the coming uh, weeks so we're going to take our acetate and we're just going to put it right over the top of that double adhesive tape and that's going to completely uh, seal our our window all right now you're going to go around the edges with our foam tape and you don't want to leave any gaps you want your foam tape to go all the way um, to the other the next piece of foam so that there's no uh, gaps for your innards to come out okay so we're just going to do that all the way around and I like to just kind of measure it there hopefully we got that the right size okay I accidentally got my foam showing through the window okay so we got our foam through, and I do have this little piece over here that we're just gonna wedge right in there because I cut it a little too short. There we go. So you do want your entire uh, piece to be covered. Now I went around this twice on my original because I wanted my foam to be deeper. So we're gonna do that one more time. So does anyone else like to have little gift sets on hand to uh, give uh, as thank yous and just as encouragement? Just there's all kinds of reasons that I give someone. Or if they're just over at your house and they're oohing and on over your cards, it's nice to say, here, have some to take home and uh, enjoy and send. Um, I make so many cards, I can't possibly send them out as fast as I make them. So it is, uh, I just really enjoy sharing them with people. And uh, so I like having uh, just a little set that I can hand to somebody. Let me know if that's something that you like to do too. Yes, Clarabelle says that, oh, she likes to, uh, they're a great size to mail for people in the Sunday school class. Absolutely. All right, there, that worked better. There we go. So. I made this double thick so that my um, shaker bits would have plenty of room to, to move around in there. So once you get your window made, we're going to, we want to put this down so that is perfectly placed on the inside. There we go. So we're going to line that all up, make sure that's in the right place. Then we'll get our pencil. Now, if before you put your foam on, you could have laid it down and laid this in place to, to totally mark your place. I forgot to do that step, so we're just doing it with the foam on, but it's the exact same concept. So now I'm just going to trace around here so I know exactly where to glue my panel. Okay. 
So let me know in the comments if you have your filigree frames and borders ordered and on the way already. And if you're an insider member, then you had early access. You may be getting them uh, already. So isn't let, let me know if you, you have yours. All right, now before we go any further, I'm going to add my shaker bits right in here and I'm going to add a few sequins. I'm going to add just a few uh, gold pieces in there. And like I said, these are just little sequin mixes that I've picked up here and there. And then here are some little bitty hearts. I thought they looked good with the, the red. All right. Now we're just going to go ahead and add These, and we will add our uh, filigree pieces once we get our shaker card all put together. All right, there we go. There's our shaker. But see how it looks a little plain right there? We're going to go ahead and jazz this one up as well using our filigree pieces. So we made four of these pretty little uh, corner pieces, and we're going to add those right here on our uh, top of our frame. And again, it's not cutting out totally, and that is my fault. I apologize. I thought I had checked a corner one here to make sure it cut, but it just it didn't cut all the way through. So I'm going to show you this without poking out all those pieces. Um, if I had uh, shimmed it better, that would have uh, come out just fine, and I apologize for that. There we go. It really is fast and easy. And when I did this originally, I was able just to pull them straight up without all these little bits sticking in here. But some of them are just not cut all the way through. So sometimes that happens, right? So we can go ahead and pick some of those out, which I will do off camera at a later date. But uh, you can see how we, we put this pretty piece around the whole uh, shaker card and how that just really highlights our center and gives that uh, more pizzazz. So we'll uh, go ahead with those. Um, you can use these pieces just to add in so many ways to add to these uh, special cards. So, All right, so our last one is our uh, On Your Special Day. And what we're going to do with this one, I have to grab my paper cutter one more time and my scissors and I'm going to go ahead these two that I had uh, made we're going to go ahead and cut out just like that so that they have an edge you see how they uh, so we've got our decorative piece but we want an edge on that And what we're going to do is take our piece, uh, our border piece, and again, I went around the entire border with the T-Rose ink, and I'm going to add glue right here on my edge piece, and we're going to add this border just like that. Okay, so once we get that added on, then we're going to go ahead, and I did trim this one, almost forgot that. We're going to take a half inch off the top and the bottom to make room for our border. So you can go ahead and glue that in the center of your page if you'd like. And you're just going to add this piece right here. See how that works? So you've just created yourself a decorative border. We'll see if this one will pop out well. Pop those out. All right, so you can go along and pop out all those little pieces. I wonder if my yeah, that's helping. Let's do that. Well, I've got my uh, tool here. We're just going to go through and do that and uh, see if we can get all those little bits out of there. 
This one did cut all the way through, so that makes it better, doesn't it? <laughs> there we go. All right, well, on these uh, frame and border pieces, it's so fun to just mix and match and use them in all different ways. But I just went ahead and glued that down and then uh, cut off the piece hanging over the edge. You can see how that just adds right down there, turn it over, and you can cut off your edge there. And I just did this twice on each side and I uh, framed this other side uh, with a little bit of black just to set off that edge. And my little sticky bits are all over the place. There we go. go ahead and there we go. clean that up. All right, so you can see how I added these borders on the top and the bottom to, to just jazz up this uh, piece right here with on your special day. So the last kind of tip I have for you Yes, I had matted, um, I did mat the sentiment on black just to put these black borders on the edge. When I did it the first time, I didn't, and I liked it better with the black all the way around, so I did do that. <laughs> oh, looks like a lot of people have theirs on the way. Good, good. All right, so my last tip for you today, on all of my cards, you can probably see that I have some glitter on there, and I will show you how I did that. Um, I, I used a, a gel pen and I just made my little uh, flicks inside the flowers. I just put a little bit of the, the glue on here. You can see how I just uh, made it very subtle and then with our crystal glue or our crystal glitter here, I just sprinkled over and it picks up on that glue pen. So a little, uh, there you go. You can kind of see how that uh, sparkles in there. So I just wanted to add a little bit of the glitz and glitter. Also a great way to do with the glue pen is to, to go around your letters. And uh, so for this one, I added on your special day, I colored in with the glue pen and then made those letters sparkle. For this one, I just went around the edges and added dots in the center of all the flowers to add some sparkle on this one, although it's got a lot of sparkle inside already. For this one, I did the same thing. I just added the lines coming out from the center of the flower and glittered that one. And then for this one, we'll go ahead and do, we just added dots and lines to uh, all the little flowers here. When you have a small area, it, it's very uh, nice to, to do this with your little quickie glue pen. Okay. All right, can you see the glitter on there? So that just adds a little extra, but you can see how all of our little pieces of the filigrees added to very quickly uh, make these cards fast and easy and uh, they just come together so fun there you go so in a very short amount of time we were able to make all five of our cards so i like to stack them up and tie them up with a ribbon and there we go okay i'm gonna go ahead and switch my camera back i think my main tip for you today is make sure that you uh shim your papers so that they come out well all right hold on one second while i get back to my camera view here there we go okay so my uh sticky back uh, uh gave me a little bit of a, a trouble today but i hope that you enjoyed uh the idea of making a quick and easy card set from the one page in the paper pads but most of all i hope you enjoyed uh seeing the new filigree frame and border sets and i gave you some ideas of how to use some of those accent pieces that at home on your own time you will uh 
explore new ways of, of using those and uh, putting them in your uh, card projects. So they're, they're really fun. And for those of you that have them on the way, I know you're going to love them. So, all right. I hope that you had fun today. I'm sorry that I had a little bit of trouble with my, my uh, sticky backed pieces. So y'all have a great day and I look forward to crafting with you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>